A lot of the questions take you about three seconds. A lot of them. The homework questions for tonight, some of them are very, very, very quick. So these are coordinates. How many people have worked with coordinates before? Raise your hand. Yeah, you have. Excellent. 3, 2 represents a point, one specific point. It has an x coordinate and a y. What's the x? What's the value of x in this coordinate? So that's the horizontal position. Where do you go from side to side? You go over to 3, and then you go up how much? 2. So push come to shove, could you graph all, th all three of these points? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if you did 3, 2, you go over 3, and you go up 2. Oh, there's 3, 2. Like that? What about negative 5, 6? 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's go negative 5 and up to 6. Negative 5, 6. What about 4, negative 1? Oh, that looks like it's right about here. How many people have done something like that before? Yay. Uh, you might have done some of these questions last night because you're supposed to do like six of them. Here's the first quadrant. Where's the second quadrant? Yeah, you go counterclockwise. These are the quadrants. Are the axes part of the quadrants? No. So there's the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the uh, third and fourth. There's the x-axis and the y-axis. The, the origin is actually on both axes. Okay, so that's nothing too sh earth-shatteringly new. Origin right there. You got the axes, rectangular coordinate system. Oh look, here are our quadrants. Very pretty, very nice. So we're going to look at equations that look like this. Question, is this point on that line? How can you tell if that point is on that line? Gabby. Well, like 2 is x and 9 is y. Yep. So how can you tell if this point is part of that line? Substitute. So we do 2 times what? 2 plus 3 times what? Well, that's going to be 4 plus 27. What's that equal? 31. So is this point on that line? No. No, because what? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. It doesn't make the equation true. Exactly. An equation is just the, a description of a lot of points that all follow the same rule. Does 2, 9 follow that rule? No, it doesn't make the equation true. Does 31 equal 6? No. So therefore, is it on the line? No. So if we expand that a little bit, let's expand it a little tiny bit. If I have an x value of 0 for this equation right there, if I have an x value of 0, what does the y value must be? It must be 2. It must be 2 because this goes away, leaving you with 3y equals what? 6. So therefore, what does y equal? 2 because 6 divided by 3 is 2. What about over here? What happens if y is 0? What did, raise your hand when you have it. What, ha, what does y have to be? David, 3, exactly. Those points, two, 0, 2, and 3, 0, are on that line. Why? Because when you plug them in, they make the, equa they make the equation true. They make the equation true. Those specific points actually have no, spe uh, special names. Anybody know what the special names are? The intercepts, exactly right. This one right here is where it crosses which axis? This is the x-intercept. And what's this one right here? Are those going to be super helpful points to have sometime? Do, do all lines have both an x-intercept and a y-intercept? No, but a lot of them do. Okay, so do this for me. For C and D, for C and D, fill in the blanks there. Don't say it out loud, but fill in the blanks. These two points right here for C and D, they are on the line 2x plus 3y equals 6. Figure out the blanks. Write those numbers down, and then I'll ask you about them. 4. Who agrees with that? Is it 4? Like right there? That sounds about right. Negative 6 plus 12 is 6. Good. What about D? What did you get? 9. No. nine? Who agrees with 9? Okay, so we have 2x plus 3y equals 6. And on this first one, C, it asks you, if x is negative 3, what's y? So where do we plug in that negative 3? So 3 times, sorry, 2 times what? 2 times negative 3 plus 3y has to be what? So negative 6 plus 3y has to be? So 3y has to be 12. So y is? So it must be 4. Does that make sense? Yeah. So 
the only way is 6. So here is one form of a line right here. A linear equation in two variables can be written in the form of ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b are not both 0. One of them has to not be 0. Otherwise, you have 0 equals a number, and that's not what you want. This is called standard form. Are there other forms? Yeah. yeah, this is one of them. This is just one of them. So if you want to graph something, how many points do you need to graph a line? Just need two. So if you can find them, what are two great points to try to find? Give you a hint. We looked at them first here. The x and y. Intercepts. intercepts. Why are the x and y intercepts good points to try to find sometimes? Yeah. You're plugging in zeros. Exactly. You're plugging in zeros. And do you like plugging in zeros into things? Yeah, because anytime zero touches anything with multiplication, what happens? It becomes zero. So is it easy to plug in zeros? What's the second easiest number to plug into things? One. So we'll go for intercepts if we can. So for example, for example, let's say we had that equation. Let's change it up a little bit. How about 2x plus 4y is equal to 8? Find me the 2x. Um, so when, I, when you write that as a coordinate, that's going to be, how would you write that? 4, comma what? 0. What's the y-intercept going to be? 0, comma 2. Who agrees with those? Yes. So all you need is two points. Any two non-equal points to find a line. Find two of them and you can graph it. You just connect the two. Intercepts, generally generally easy to find. Can, can I rearrange things to make it a little harder to find? Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's... What about these three right here? Some of you are talking about this already. What is this a line right here? Is that a line? Yes. Sure is. So can someone raise their hand and tell me what type of line that is? Gabby, what is that? That is a horizontal line. Horizontal line. Is this a line? Sure is. What kind of line is that? Vertical line. And what about this one? Is that a horizontal line? It is? No, it's not. There's an X and a Y in there. So is it horizontal? No. no. Is it vertical? No. no. <laughs> it's something in between. Yeah. Something in between. Not horizontal, not vertical. This is what I'd like you to do. Graph me those three lines right now. Separately. Not on the same graph. Um, separately. Actually, you could do it on the same graph if you use different colors. How do you feel about these three lines right here? You have horizontal, vertical, you can call them slant. Or oblique. Or diagonal. Yeah. Slant. What um we're gonna talk about slope in a second. Okay. So Bertie, give me a number between one and ten. Three. David, give me a number between one and ten. Two. Two. Uh Meg, give me a number between one and ten. Give me a number between one and ten, Gabby. Seven. These two points, are they the same point? No. So can we find a midpoint between them? You add together the x values. What are the x values? Three plus five divided by two, comma. 2 plus 7 divided by 2. Simplify a little bit, you end up with 8 over 2 and 9 over 2. Close. <laughs> so 4 comma 9 over 2. There's your midpoint. So does this look complicated? Not really, but it can. If you first see that, you're like, Meh. all this means is the x value from the first point and the x value from the second point. What's the easiest way people mess this up? Yeah, they add the x's and the y's. Don't do that. They add like the first x and the second y. Exactly. Exactly. First x, second y. There's lots of different ways to pair it up, right? No, no. But what, if you graph these, if you graph two points, where should the midpoint be? The middle. So if you graph three points and they're not on a line, it can't be a midpoint in the first place. So if you're going to do this, the midpoint's going to be in the middle. Exactly. So if it's down here, you, if it's down here, you know there's a problem, right? Okay. So how about you do this for me? Uh, six two and five negative four. Find me the midpoint. The x coordinate of the midpoint. What's the x coordinate of the midpoint going to be? Anybody have it? Uh, somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Anybody new here? Meg, what's the x coordinate? Okay. 
What's the x-coordinate, Mike? Correct. Anybody have the y-coordinate? What is it? Negative one. Who agrees with that right there? Nice. Good job. So it's fine. Grade. Grade. It's right there. Grade. There's lots of different ways. Slope measures steepness is one way to say it. There's different ways to figure out slope. There's different ways to conceptualize slope. When you're looking at slope, though, you're always looking from left to right. You're always looking from left to right. So what kind of slope would this be, left to right? Positive. This would be negative. Exactly. What type of slope is this? It has slope. Zero. Zero slope, which is not positive or negative. The slope is zero. It doesn't, every, every line has slope, except for what do we call the slope like this? Undefined. Undefined. Exactly. Exactly. So for example, we might figure out the slope of this line. How many points define a line? Two. Any two points. Between any two points on a line, should the slope always be the same? Yeah, because a line by definition doesn't change slope. So if you have two points, you can draw a line, but if you have two points, you can also find the slope. There's a phrase that you might have heard over and over again with regards to slope. Something over something. Yeah, you've seen this so many times, potentially. Rise over run, which is the change in y over the change in x. You've also probably seen it as y2 minus y1 over... You subtract x's from x and <laughs> y's from y's. What's the same way this gets messed up but the midpoint thing gets messed up? X's and Y's get all mixed together and you're like subtracting X from Y and Y from X. You can't do that. Is the same. Is the same. You can reverse them, but they need to be the same. Exactly. Very good. So this is the formula you see, see, which I just wrote out for you. What's that one thing X1 can't be equal to X2? Why can't X1 be equal to X2? And then you have zero where? The bottom. The bottom. Do we like that? No, we don't like dividing by zero. We don't like that. Yes? Um, like, does it really matter? You can. The only other way you can write this is y1 minus y2, but then what has to be on the bottom? x1 minus x2. Can you flip just one of them? It'll flip the sign. It'll flip the sign of the slope. So instead of getting 2, you get negative 2, and that won't be right. So you can do it. It just has to be the same order. Pick one point to be your first point and one point to be your second point. And you're subtracting everything from one point from the other. You can't mix it up. You can't mix it up. So, for example, if I make up a point here, how about 2, 9, and another point, 6, 8? What are the y values? What are they? So it's going to be 9 minus 8 over, no, not 6. It will be 2 minus 6. You have to go the same direction. So what's that going to be? 1 over negative 4. If I, if I flip this, if I flipped it and did 9 minus 8 over 6 minus 2, what do I get? Nope, 1 over 4. Is that the same thing? No. You can't, you have to do it both ways. Now, I said you could do it either way, right? If I went the ob, if I went up, that would be 8 minus what? Over. Oh, negative 1 over 4. Is that the same? So if you flip both of them, it's correct. But if you flip just one, no. Yep. That way, yeah. So another common thing is people will do the right order, but then they'll put the x difference on top. So many times in your life you're going to do this. So let's say, though, so that's if you have two points right here. If you have two points, that's what you do. What do you do, though, if you have an equation like this? Let's say it's written as an equation and you want to find the slope of that line. What's one way you could go about finding the slope? Ah, boom, which is y equals uh, plus b. And what's m? Slope. And this right here is the slope intercept form, right? There's another one. We'll get to it. Just let's do one at a time. So, is this, what form is that in right now? Standard form, right? The A value is 4, the B value is negative 1, and the C value is negative 8. But if we want to go to slope intercept form, we need to isolate which variable? Y. So, if we isolate Y, what's the first thing we could do to isolate Y on this one right here? So negative y is equal to negative 4x minus 8. Is, is y isolated? Almost. Now what do we multiply both sides by? So you get y is equal to what? 
plus 8. So what's the slope? 4. Good. 4 over 1. You can say 4 over 1. That's totally fine. So it goes up 4 every time it goes over to the right 1. Is that a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive. Again, what's the slope? Oh, we already talked about that. Slope is 0. Oh, we already talked about this too. Vertical line, what's the slope? Undefined. Plus 8. So find me the slope of this right now. Don't. Okay, so you need to isolate y, right? So you have neg first, you subtract the 3x, so you get negative 3x plus 8. Is that, look up there, is that correct? I subtracted 3x from both sides. The first thing you do is subtract 3x. And now what do I do, Kieran, on this one? But divide by what? Everything, right. So you get y is equal to negative 3 over negative 5x minus 8 over 5. So what's the slope going to simplify to? Which number there is the slope? Yeah, so if I simplify negative 3 over negative 5, what does that become? 3 fifths. Yep. So the slope right there would be 3 fifths. What happens if I asked you to graph this line right here? It says a slope 2 over 3 and an intercept 0, negative 4. Where should you start? The intercept. So if we start here, where is 0, negative 4? Is that on the x-axis or the y-axis? Really? Go down 4, right? It's right here at negative 4. And then what do you do from negative 4? Up 2 over 3. So there's our point. Hey, we have two points. Now what can we do? There it is. You graphed it. Excellent. How many points do you need to graph a line? That's it. We've already talked about this. Positive slope indicates we're going up from left to right. Negative goes down. This is important. The word parallel. Two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. Two non-vertical lines with the same slope are parallel. Two non-vertical parallel lines have the same slope. So if I tell you two lines are parallel, that tells you that they have the same slope. That's it. That's it. Slope of line one was three over four. What's the perpendicular slope? That's what upside down t means, by the way. It's perpendicular. Negative what? What happens when I multiply these together? What do I get? So a really easy way to remember that is if the product of the slopes is negative 1, they, then they are perpendicular. There's one exception. Vertical line and horizontal line. Are they perpendicular? Are they perpendicular? Yeah. What's your favorite color? Hamburger. Like, welcome to my world, everybody. <laughs> Vertical and horizontal. Yeah. Are they perpendicular? Yes, yeah. they are. But can you multiply their slopes? No, because this one doesn't have a slope. It's undefined. So the way you check to see if two lines are perpendicular, you check to see if their slopes multiply to negative 1. That's it. Question for you. One last one here. If the slope was 5, can someone tell me what the perpendicular slope is? Negative 1 over 5. Exactly. Okay.